Hi everyone, it's me. As a foreigner living in the UK, I spent eight hours, 12 minutes, and 52 seconds listening to the best British albums of all time. Here's what I thought. Make sure to leave a comment down below. I'd love to know your thoughts. What's your favorite? What's your least favorite? What'd you think of this top 10? But without further ado, let's go. Starting off our list at number 10, we have Adele with 25. Now this is actually the earliest album on the list. It was released in November, 2015. Now that date has a very special place in my heart because November, 2015 was the date that I moved to the UK. And for me, I did not have a honeymoon period when I moved to the UK. It was rough. Just, it was really tough. And I kind of forgot, but this album was very much like the soundtrack to that part of my life. Now, as part of the experiment, I listened to it fully, like I did every album, start to finish every song, no skipping, and wow, I totally forgot how good this album is. I got chills. The opening track, Hello, is an absolute belter of a song and it really sets the pace for this entire album. It is genius. <laughs> I just, I absolutely love it. I don't often have a lot of albums that I'll listen to fully. Like there's, you know, there's usually like a song or two that you skip. This is one of those albums. I will happily listen to 25 from start to finish. Every song is just absolutely genius and it does have a very special place in my own personal history. So it was pretty wild starting off this experiment with Adele 25. 10 out of 10, I absolutely love it. Number nine, we have Amy Winehouse back to black. Now I hadn't listened to pretty much any Amy Winehouse in a long time. So put on my big headphones. I actually laid on the couch for this one and just listened. Wow. <laughs> wow. Amy had such a unique style and such a unique voice that it is really hard to believe that this album is from 2006 and is not like a classic 1960s album. We've got reggae, we've got R&B, we've got pop, we've got blues, we've got soul and jazz. There's just so many different styles in this one album with Amy's like signature voice. Absolutely wild. And it all works so well together in that it creates this album that is so raw and vulnerable. Now, I definitely didn't appreciate this album when it first came out because I was like 13. So I know some of the songs from when it came out, they were really big hits. I mean, we had rehab on the radio constantly, but at 13, I really didn't get it, <laughs> obviously. Now, listening to the album, I am now older than Amy was when she died, and I, I get it. I get it now. When you listen to the album, when you listen to the lyrics and the stories that she's telling, it just breaks your heart. And I definitely never got that when I first listened. With age, <laughs> with time, it really gave this album a completely new perspective. Now, some people argue that this album is only on the top 10 best British albums of all time because of Amy's untimely death, because there was like, there's a lot of drama and controversy with her life and in the public and in the media and all that kind of stuff. And I think people are going to have to draw their own conclusion. For me, I think it's worthy. Number eight, we have Fleetwood Mac with Rumors. Now let's go back to February, 1977. Do you remember what you were doing? I certainly don't. <laughs> the complexity of the lyrics on this album are just absolutely crazy. It is so complex. It is so varied. There's just, there's a lot of heart and soul in this album. And I know that there was a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes of which I am not up to date with the Fleetwood Mac lore. I just know there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes. And this album, I mean, it's so, powerful. It's incredible. And also, can I say, we don't have enough groups that have male and female vocalists. We need more of that. I, I love it. Why don't we have more of that? 
Overall, this is a fabulous album. I knew some of the songs, but I never sat down and listened to like the whole thing, you know? Um, it was great, I had a great time, loved it. Number seven, we have Queen Greatest Hits Volume Two. Now, if you can believe it, and I bet that you can, this is not the only entry for Queen on this top 10. So we're gonna put a pin in this, okay? We're gonna come back to it in a hot second. But if you want a little bit of pub quiz trivia, this is the longest album out of the top 10, the more you know. Coming in at number six, we have Dire Straits Brothers in Arms. Now, if you put a gun to my head and said, Alana, name a Dire Straits song, I would have to say goodbye to my mother <laughs> because I couldn't do it. As someone who, I like music, I listen to a variety of stuff. This was the album that I went into with absolutely no prior knowledge. Now we are properly in the 80s with Brothers in Arms since you got that pop sort of element to it. Very, very 80s. Now, as I was going through this album, there's definitely songs that I recognize. I was like, oh, I didn't know that was Dire Straits. Oh, I didn't know that was Dire Straits. But to be honest, out of the 10, this was my least favorite album. So sorry if they're your favorites. This album was a slog to get through. It just didn't really click with me. I, I just didn't like it. I will say the title track, Brothers in Arms, incredible, heartbreaking, just like, a very powerful song. But overall, this album was really just not my vibe. Um, I really wanted to skip it. <laughs> I didn't, but it just wasn't really for me. Coming in at number five, we have Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Now, if you gave me the opportunity, I could talk about this album for days. <laughs> So I'll try to keep it brief. To be honest, I was kind of surprised that this album wasn't higher up on the list. We are at number five. Number five is not, you know, unreasonable. I just thought it would be higher. Perhaps maybe where this is verging into some like experimental kind of sounds that it's not as commercially, commercially appreciated as some of the other albums. Um, I know this album, but I hadn't listened to it in years. So once again, I sat down on the couch, put on my big headphones and just listened. And honestly, this album kind of gave me like an out of body experience that is so dramatic, but I'm not kidding. Now I specifically remember riding my bike at 16. I just got a job at the local library. I would ride my bike with my iPod and I would listen to money from this album, Pink Floyd money, as I'm riding my bike to work. Don't ride your bike when listening to your iPod, that's quite dangerous. One thing that I have really learned from this experience is that time and age and overall life experience really can change your perspective on music and on a particular album. I knew this album at 16 and there's definitely songs that I used to skip at 16, you know, ones that just didn't fit with me, but now, um, Wow. <laughs> this is one of the most creative and like out of world albums. Where you listen to something like Adele, Adele is so relatable, it's so like grounded. This is like in outer space. It's an expansive album, it's huge. And yet there's so many like little details like breathing or like footsteps that if you don't pay attention, you could miss it. This whole album, honestly, I had a fabulous time. It was like listening to this album for the first time. When I was sitting on the couch listening to this album, Album, having an out of body experience, like this album really hit me. Something about it just really hit me. Perfect timing, you know, sometimes it's just the perfect time. And I was reflecting back on 16 year old Alana, listening to this album, riding my bike to my first job, to now much older Alana, who is staring 30 in the face. And I just, it's hard to explain. There was one particular lyric that I actually wrote down because it just hit me. Tired of lying in the sunshine, staying home to watch the rain. You are young and life is long and there is time to kill today. And then one day you find 10 years have got behind you. No one told you when to run, you missed the starting gun. What? 
Anyway, here's Wonderwall. Coming in at number four, of course, we have Oasis, What's the Story, Morning Glory. I've actually never listened to this album aside from Wonderwall, which every time I've heard Wonderwall, it has been against my will. <laughs> But I actually enjoyed this album way more than I thought I would. There's lots of songs on here that I totally forgot and other ones that I had never heard. In my humble opinion, I think a lot of Oasis sounds the same. Like it's hard to sort of pick out individual songs, at least in my humble opinion. But I actually really enjoyed this way more than I thought I would. It's kind of similar to Fleetwood Mac where there's a lot of turmoil in the background. There's a lot of personal problems in the background and yet you've created such an influential piece of art. And it is crazy how many people were inspired or influenced by this album. In my humble opinion, I think Pink Floyd beats out Oasis. My humble thoughts. But I think where this is much more accessible you know it's very relatable it's very grounded i think a lot of people can relate to this i totally get why we have oasis here at number four now would you believe for number three we have a second entry for an artist do you know who it is number three is adele with 21. yep adele is on our top 10 list twice which at first kind of surprised me but also i get it I actually went to see her on tour. My sister and I got tickets to Adele in Toronto for her 21 tour, which the fact that she is so young producing this type of music is absolutely crazy. Now I remember sitting up in the nosebleeds, we had like really high tickets. My sister and I are up in the nosebleeds watching Adele's 21 tour. I was probably like 16 and she sings Someone Like You, if you guys remember that song. And I was just, sobbing. I didn't know what any of those themes meant. I was 16. <laughs> I didn't know what it meant to love and lose, to, you know, heartbreak and all that kind of stuff. I was 16. I had no idea. And I think that just goes to show how powerful Adele is. She can tap into emotions that I couldn't even articulate because I was so young, but I could still feel it. If you are watching this and you think, nah, Adele, not my cup of tea. I would like to challenge you on that. Have a cuppa, sit in your favorite chair, wear your best headphones and just listen. I think there is something in Adele's albums that everyone can relate to. Number two, can you guess who it is? We have the Beatles, of course, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. What an album. <laughs> In my humble opinion, this is kind of similar to Pink Floyd in that it is so creative. It is so inspired. It is so creative. It is so powerful. And I think very few groups or bands or artists could make something this scale. Does that make sense? This weird, something this creative. Now, personally, I actually prefer I prefer Abbey Road in my humble opinion, but there's no denying how influential and how wide reaching this album was and still is. I can't even begin to imagine creating something that is so inspiring for so many people for such a long period of time. Like I think us, <laughs> us as humans, as regular people, I don't think we will ever truly understand what it is and how it is to create something like this. I remember going to the John Lennon exhibition in New York City. I don't know if it's still there. It was put on by Yoko Ono. This was probably 2010 maybe. Um, and it was an ex exhibition of you know his life and ultimately his death. Deeply sad, <laughs> real sad. Um, cried, okay? But there is something about just how talented he was. And I will say John Lennon is not just the Beatles, but he's certainly part of it. Um, yeah, just, it was absolutely wild. I don't know if it's still there. It was really moving. What else is there to say about the Beatles? Massive, influential, powerful. It makes all the sense in the world that they are number two on this list. Number one on the best British albums of all time, we have Queen Greatest Hits. 
Now, I was raised listening to Queen, and I would be lying if I said I didn't know every single word on this album because I, it's one of those things that I will never forget. But in fairness to this experiment, I put on my big headphones, I was gonna listen to the album front to back, and I actually went for a walk. It was a beautiful day, I went out for a walk to listen. I made it about 30 seconds, and I started to cry. And I might cry now, so, if you lasted this long in the video, <laughs> buckle up. My dad played Queen for me um, since I was a baby. <laughs> he died a few years ago and I didn't realize, oh man. <laughs> he died a few years ago and I didn't realize that I had been subconsciously avoiding his music for that entire time. So there I was, listening to Bohemian Rhapsody, <laughs> and my chin is starting to shake, and I'm like trying to keep it together because I am in public at a local park. <laughs> and my eyes start to well up, and I'm like, Alana, come on, you can do it. By the time we reach Fat Bottom Girls, I am actively crying, tears streaming in the park, listening to Fat Bottom Girls, and yes, I do know all the words. I've probably known all the words since I was about eight. <laughs> if you've ever lost a parent, and in particular, if you've ever lost a parent in your 20s, you know that that wound doesn't heal. But as I'm walking around the park, tears just falling, big fat tears. It was very difficult and it was embarrassing and it was sad, but it also was very therapeutic. I never really understood how much music connects us. Um, across continents, across generations, and even across lifetimes. Objectively, <laughs> objectively, this is the greatest album of all time. The sheer talent, the creativity, the complexity, the variety is unmatched. But it was also my dad's favorite album. And I don't think there's anything else to say. This whole experience, this eight hour and 12 minute experience was way more enlightening than I thought it would be. It was fun, it was difficult, it was challenging, it was therapeutic. Um, I had an absolute blast doing this. I hope you guys like this video and please do leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts, favorite album, least favorite. Was there anything that you were surprised that wasn't on the list? I'd love to read your comments. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, bye.